Economics, Standard 12, Unit 5, Monetary Economics, Continued. Effects of Inflation. We learnt what is inflation, type of inflation and causes of inflation. Let us learn today effects of inflation. Effects of inflation can be classified into two, that is on production and on distribution. So effects of inflation on production. So on production. So on production side, we have to remember the traders and the business people. So what happens? Moderate inflation results in. So first, moderate inflation just gives a boom or what we call it is moderate inflation. Moderate inflation gives an incentive, an incentive to traders. See, the prices rise, so automatically profit is there. So traders and producers, they get profit and they would like to uh, induce their profit for more benefit. So that they can, the business people, increase their investment and uh, in production and as a result that is it generates employment so incentive to pro uh, pro traders is happens only due to the moderate inflation on the other hand hyperinflation just results in a serious depreciation of the value of money and uh, it discourages savings on the part of the public so here moderate inflation helps the traders to invest more but whereas hyperinflation hyperinflation discourages savings discourages savings discourages savings of the people so that is happening okay now this depreciation of the value of the money results in or it drains out the foreign capital. So even the foreign capital is drained out because of the depreciation of the value of the money. So third one drains foreign capital. Drains foreign capital. So first you have to remember that is moderate inflation gives an incentive to traders and business people. They invest more and so that they can get more profit and as a result is generation of employment opportunities of that. Second you remember that is hyperinflation discourages savings of the people and thirdly you have to remember this is the depreciation on the value of money drains out even the foreign capital and fourth that is with reduced capital accumulation the investment suffers a serious setback so and uh, businessmen are just are not willing to take uh, that is uh, what we call it as business risk so that is also happens in the uh, inflation time and inflation also leads to hoarding you know hoarding both consumers part as well as producers part so hoarding of the essential goods so hoarding of the essential goods are also done hoarding of goods both on consumer side as well as the producers side occur and then the last is this leads to high inflation rate why because of this hoarding things and the last and the most important one is inflation encourages investment on speculative activities rather than production activities. Inflation effects on uh, distribution side. We can see we have more four important points. And the first important point is that is the debtors and creditors. Debtors and creditors gain and lose. That is, debtors are the, so debtors, they are gainers, they gain, so gainers, whereas, and creditors, losers. You know, debtors, when 
they would have borrowed the money, they would have borrowed when the money value is higher purchasing power of money value. And automatically now when they return back or repay the loan, the purchasing power of the money is low because of the rises in prices. So automatically they gain and the creditors, they lose their gain. Okay, so that's the thing that we find the debtors are gainers and the uh, whereas creditors are losers. The second important one, the worst people affected during the time of inflation is fixed income group. You know, fixed income groups, they are during inflation, their incomes just being fixed do not bear any relationship with the rise in prices. So automatically the cost of living is high, but their income is low. The same income is the same. And we just find that is people, those who are receiving wages, salaries, pension, and uh, even that is they are invested money for interest, the interest rate is also will be the same. That is and rent, so etc. So the cost of living is high whereas their income is fixed and so they cannot meet uh, the cost of living. So they are the worst people, those who suffer during the inflation. So the first point and second point, fixed income group. So fixed income groups, they are losers, okay, they are the losers. And third, the third, another important point that we have to think of entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs gain because of the rise in prices of the goods and commodities. So just uh, think that the entrepreneurs, whether they are manufacturers, traders, business people, merchants, they experience windfall gains as the prices of their stocks suddenly go up. So automatically they gain. So entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs gain. So they are gainers. Clear? And fourth, the fourth important point is regarding the investors. So first we have seen the debtors and creditors, third fixed, in, second fixed income groups and third entrepreneurs and the fourth important point is investors. So the investors who generally invest on fixed uh, interest yielding bonds and securities, fixed interest yielding bonds and securities have much to lose during inflation. Those who invest in shares that stand to gain by rich dividends and the appreciation in value of shares. So those who invested in shares stand to gain much. They have rich dividends and appreciation in value of shares. But whereas those who invested their money on fixed interest yielding bonds and securities, they are the losers. So that is also another important point that you have to remember. So on the basis of investors, on the basis of investors, so those who have just invested on fixed, uh, what is the interest yielding bonds and securities, uh, they use this. So fixed interest, fixed interest uh, bonds, and securities, they, they are losers, losers, but whereas those who invest money on, that is uh, what we call as shares, so they gain by rich dividends and uh, appreciation in value of shares, so shareholders, that is, share, invest on shares, invest on shares, Gain, gainers, so invest on shares, invest on shares, they are the gainers. So in this way we can just see the effects on distribution side. 
So effects on production side and effects on distribution side. So just to recall certain important points regarding effects on production side, then moderate inflation just gives incentive to traders and producers and hyperinflation just discourages savings of the people. And third one is depreciation draws or drains the foreign capital. And a fourth important point that you have to remember is that is inflation leads to hoarding both by the consumer side as well as by the producer side and then uh, with the reduced capital that is uh, accumulation that is uh, people suffer setback and it may discourage entrepreneurs and business people from taking business risk so that is also another important point Inflation encourages investment in speculative activities rather than productive activities. So that are on production side. And when we just come for on uh, distribution side, we have these four important points, effects on distribution, whereas the debtors, gainers, and um, the creditors of the losers. Debtors, because when they borrowed money, they would have, that is when there was the purchasing power of the money was high. They borrowed the money and when they repay the money, repay the loans, then the purchasing power of the money is low. So they gain. Uh, and the fixed income groups, their income, salaries, wages or pensioners uh, and um, even interest rent, they are fixed. So automatically, when there is a rise in price, the cost of living is high and they find it very difficult to manage. And the third, the entrepreneurs, of course, they are gainers because the price rise in prices. Windfall gain is given for entrepreneurs, whether they are traders, manufacturers, or business people. And then investors, investors, those who fix it, uh, those who invest on fixed interest uh, bonds and securities, they lose. But whereas those who invest on shares, they gain because of the uh, rich dividends and appreciation in value of shares. So these are the important effects on distribution as well as production by inflation.